All right, we're gonna be talking about the one and done shotgun mic for voiceovers, podcast, video work, streaming. So let's not waste any time, let's go. What is going on you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the channel. And yes, today we are gonna be talking about a one and done situation here when it comes to a microphone with many use cases here. And of course, let me preface that I do recommend a few microphones out there, not like a ton, not a plethora, but a few, and there are still some of my favorites, but I am talking about and want to clarify the title of this video in that if I had one mic to choose for all of these use cases, the shotgun mic is going to be the way to go. And the one from Deity, the S Mic 2S, I've talked about it on this channel before, I'm going to be talking a little bit more specific when it comes to voiceover work and podcasting, because in the video use case, it is just out of the shot here, and I'm talking to you on a camera. So this is the video component, being able to put this over your subject, out of the frame, and getting good audio. So that, of course, is that use case. But let's actually bring it into a podcasting workflow here, and let's actually cut to a podcast that we're working on that will be launching as of July 3rd, 2020. So hopefully it'll be launched by the time this video comes out, a relaunch that is. But let me bring it into the shot. In the meantime, let's cut to that podcast. All right, so about to take off on some travel here with my co-host. This is going to be a safe travel experience. And, you know, speaking of which, is this really the best time to relaunch a podcast, specifically a travel podcast, when we are in the middle of a pandemic? What else do we have to do right now, right? I mean, we're, we're stuck. And we want to talk about travel, so we might as well record ourselves. That's right. We're all trying to break out here. And speaking of breaking out, why don't we just go ahead and just roll right into it and be as safe as possible. All right. So we've actually got this in the shot. And as you will see, it is off to the left and at around a 45 degree angle. So not your traditional putting the microphone in front of your mouth. And that is just based on the design of these shotgun mics and how they're supposed to pick up in the pickup pattern. Because a lot of times we have them out of the shot and pointed down on the subject. And so again, it is best so to avoid a lot of plosives and wind noise having it in front of me. That's what would happen with the shotgun mic versus having it off to the side and at a 45 degree angle right around my chest. Yeah, so obviously the, the standard precautions that I would take, of course, not touching my face, mask, hand sanitizer, and trying to distance myself and being very patient with people as aren't we all patient on a flight, right? Like when you're like ready, you know, when we, when we pull up, we taxi and we're like ready to get off the flight, everybody is so nice. No, no, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. Be patient, please. Um, so patience would definitely be, um, paramount, but what I would actually do is if I were flying, if I had to fly or desired to fly now, something that I obviously need to mention is that you've likely researched or you have already invested in an audio interface. So whether an audio interface that plugs directly into your computer that allows you to use an XLR balanced connection microphone like this, that also supplies the power to this microphone because this does not have USB capability. And also too, I have to mention the Zoom H6 that I always recommend in most of my videos, a handheld recorder that is also an audio interface that you could plug directly into your computer, but also on this situation, I have it on battery power and I don't need a computer for it and I'm recording directly into the handheld. Now, of course, bringing you back into my specific use case here and likely what could be your use case and why you're likely here is that, of course, I do have my camera always set up on this apparatus that I have actually shared on a video that I will link up and this microphone always set up on this adjustable arm. But moving into the voiceover and podcasting and even streaming work, if I don't mind having this in the shot and then I get a text from my co-host like, hey, you want to lay down a track for the podcast? Sure, I can just bring this down and not worry about it being in the shot because I want better sound quality, better audio there. So it's just ready to roll and on the go. I don't have to unpack it and connect it because I've already got that all done. Now, of course, moving my use case outside of the studio, if I am working on any kind of sound design, wanting to record any audio that I'm going to use in video or in any other audio project that I'm working on, I'm going to take this microphone. It is very well built. 
It is very lightweight at 85 grams. And with the windscreen and also just the pickup pattern, it has great off axis rejection when it comes to the wind noise. And of course, if that wind is bringing in some moisture, this thing is also weather resistant as well. So if it gets rained on, you're still gonna be able to use it. And of course, just highlighting what most people think of shotgun microphones, and that is it being on a boom arm or boom pole, whether out of the shot. And let's just kind of like throw the video piece out of it. If you have multiple people that are around the table, whether you are outside, which again, it's great because it has a lot of off axis rejection and good with the wind, or you're in a studio and you have multiple people that you wanna pick up their voices, but just kind of have it setting up out of the way or just in the middle of them. And again, as long as the angles are set and right and you're checking your levels, Again, the shotgun mic could be the way to go when you have multiple people and you just have the one mic. All right, and another way you can actually set it up is having the mic in between the two people instead of over top. And so in this scenario, I've got my son Liam here. Welcome to the test. So I'd already asked you before, we'd already talked about, but I did ask you, a lot of kids wanna be YouTubers. Do you wanna be a YouTuber? No, definitely not. No, how come? Because it's very stressful just trying to deal with everything that YouTubers have to go with, with the editing and people commenting bad stuff and maybe good stuff, but it could be stressful with that. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to be as responsive uh, with the good stuff as you are the bad stuff, just to make sure that, um, you know, people are behaving. But now, I think we also had talked about your generation and like the teenagers are going to TikTok and You've had a little bit of TikTok experience, like you've kind of like watched your brothers and your mom and stuff. So what what do you think is most appealing about TikTok? Um, just there's some funny content that just makes TikTok its own originality. Mm -hmm. And I, that's kind of what I like about TikTok. Yeah. It's kind of right. like the next Vine. Oh, it is the next Vine. Well, if it's the next Vine, then I should actually become a TikToker then. So I should do, no, no, no. no TikTok? No. Just stay with YouTube then. All right, I'm gonna stay with YouTube. All right, so just a short one on this one. What questions can I continue to answer for you? What kind of conversations can we have below? Go out there and do those things that matter. Keep rocking the faces. I'm gonna keep creating here for you so that you can go do the things that mean the most to you. So go do the things. Rock the faces. I'm going to keep creating and I'll catch you on the next one.